I, I'd like to say thank you again to our other relatives because um, this is your territory and your struggle is definitely our struggle. We all live here in your homeland and it's our responsibility to make sure that we're supporting you. And so we're very grateful that you're here with us tonight to share how we can help you. So I invite Renee to come up and talk about um, the, the actions that go into it. talk about sensitive uh, subjects like Maga and Bob and about some of the uh, cultural aspects of that, I believe that it's really important that we maintain that sense of listening, so I ask them to be here, um, so they're not just my body, bodyguards. But they can do that too. Um, again, my name is Renee, I'm Akin uh, I I come from the village of Bagui, which is, uh, which is on what they call the Hitler Renee community. Um, my family is from there, but my father's family is from um, the Pomat, which is near uh, Maldagwad, which is known as South Mountain. Uh, Patrilineally, that is where my clans um, come from, which I am on um, Bon clan, which I'm Coyote clan, which makes sense to probably a lot of my friends right now. But um, I come here uh, to share some information, but before I do it, uh, regarding the South Mountain freeway to but before I do that, um, I really wanted to acknowledge uh, the other people on the panel. I've known them um, from different uh, work, I guess you could call it. Uh, Sandra did a, a great job. I'm glad that she, she opened in such a, a strong way because as I was sitting there, or as I've been thinking about this about today, and I've been going through notes and I've been going through you know, the logistical stuff about the past information. Uh, regarding the 202, I was hit with a lot of uh, emotion when speaking about this because these are very personal uh, experiences for us as indigenous people. And as I came here to, to share information with everyone, I had to get myself in a place where I was comfortable sharing that information. And a part of doing that is to acknowledge a lot of the pain that comes with this kind of work. I feel what Sandra is feeling. I was um, fortunate enough to go with the Apache Shaman on the caravan to DC in 2015. Um, I acknowledge the heaviness and, and the, the uh, emotional impacts that Sandy Rock has, has had. I was also fortunate to be there at Sandy Rock as well with uh, my family at a Red Warrior Camp. I wanted us to first sit with that, just for a few seconds because I feel like that's a really important part of this. And when you see working with certain organizations and working with indigenous people, you will see the way that we organize ourselves and the way that we talk about these things. It is a long process that cannot be condensed into a five minute, probably a three minute presentation. So while a lot of people here are coming to get back to, and how can we do this? And what, what representatives do we need to call? And what do you need right now? I think we need you to be present with us right now. Because these communities that are being affected, we're feeling that. And right now I'm feeling that. So I'm going to ask you please just for a few seconds, let's just acknowledge that. And let's acknowledge what has brought us here. Not only the wonderful women I was going to do, which honestly that's what we want here. But also um, Sandy Rock, because without the momentum that Sandy Rock had created, a lot of people sitting in these seats would not be here. Okay, not just non-indigenous people, but also indigenous people. It has created such a momentum that has people that people have <laughs> gotten themselves motivated to, to get um, involved. And I thank you for this, and I thank you for doing this for me. Um, before I go into some information regarding 202, and I'm going to keep it very brief because y'all have Google, and y'all can look up a lot of this information, not only about the 202, but by Oak Flat, 
uh, you know, not your mascot and so on. But um, I also wanted to acknowledge Monona because I was sharing with a friend uh, on the way here that in December, late November, December, when we were at Red Warrior, you know, the morale of the camp, not only just our camp, but in general on the camp itself was very low. And I remember that I was walking, you have to remember I'm a desert woman walking a lot of snow, <laughs> very, very far from um, her community. And when I was walking there, I'm, probably, I'm sure Ramona doesn't remember this because I was probably like layered up in like tons and tons of clothes. Of, <laughs> but I was probably also past that, so. But when I seen her, like, everything just lit up. And there was so much that was alleviated for me. And I think from a lot of people there. Never in my life would I have ever imagined to be there as an awful woman, to be in this place, to see one of my heroes in the same space that I was. And that heaviness was led with for a few moments, so I wanted to, to share that with you. And thank you for paving the, the way for us, like it was mentioned before, to be a little bit more braver, a little bit more courageous in, in the past that I've been set before us. Because we know as indigenous women, these are not the lives that we aim to have. They're hard lives. They're not fair lives a lot of times. And the work is definitely a struggle. So thank you. And thank you, I want to thank also the organizers to organize this event to, to bring us here. I will, right now, like I said, very briefly talk about the 202, because like I said, I see all of your phones out, probably live streaming. Hey everybody, probably out there on Facebook. This is really embarrassing. But also, um, these information is definitely something at your fingertips, literally, that you can, you can find out for yourself. The Loop 202 extension, also known as the South Mountain Freeway, is something that has been known to the Gila River Indian community for nearly 30 years. And for just as long as that, the Gila River Indian community has also been in opposition to that. And they made that plainly clear by passing tribal resolutions, by holding community votes that again and again has said that the community wants nothing to do with this freeway, whether it be on tribal land, or whether it be through our sacred model, South Mountain. But again and again, as we know, as indigenous people, as, as oppressed, as marginalized people, if the governmental agencies like MAD and ADOG, they, they go through these formalities with really no intention of listening to us. So please pardon me if I feel if I say that even a two-party, even a three-party, four-party, five-party system is going to be of any avail to us as indigenous people. What Sandy Rock has created and has shown us that we are able to do this ourselves. And Sandy Rock is the only time, even, out, even living in my community, that I actually felt free. And the reason behind that is that we were able to collectively as indigenous people from all types of places, able to live somewhat harmoniously and at least to skill share and support each other, whether it be through um, direct action, through prayer, through sharing songs. But we also know, like I had mentioned before, that all this information is online, I'm so sorry. But one of the things that, when I came to thinking about this event, one of the things that I wanted to really stress to the people that were here involved that are more politically inclined is that this freeway system continues to perpetuate this dry culture, this fossil fueled, you know, society that definitely needs to stop. We all live here collectively and we all know that our resources are very limited, that our air gets dirtier and dirtier. And as we, as we do that, we have to really take into consideration a lot of the first communities that are here. So the Loop 202 extension is within a mile of schools 
of neighborhoods. And when in October, September, um, we established a camp there at Mala, just on the reservation side um, of the freeway alignment. And as I was thinking about what am I going to share with these people, what is going to make any kind of impact, and this may not make any impact whatsoever, but I know that at least indigenous people, and especially the Alton people, can build this. We time is at, a critical, is at a critical point right now. And I shared with my friends that this is the last time I'm going to speak on this. If you have any information or anything that you want to you know, know more about, you can talk to me you know, by myself. And the reason is that is that they are building, they are tearing, they are destructing as we speak. One of the days that I was at the camp, I was there alone. It was after maybe two days of being at the camp alone. Um, it was a warm day, unseasonably warm. And I was sitting there reading, listening, as you get more and more in tune with the mountain, you, you start to notice a lot of things. And all of a sudden, a huge crash. And it shook me. I knew what it was, but it was still hard to hear. And within three seconds, all these birds came flying out of the ridge that they had just blown up. They came flying to us, to our community, to our village. Our village is on the west end. And it may have such an impact on my part as an awful woman, as a woman and as a people who have, have already felt tremendous land trauma by having our river dammed by upstream settlers, by having our voices continuously disregarded in this process, in these formalities, that we are continuously asked to maneuver through, when we know the end result never, ever benefits us. Look at Sydney. Look at Oakwood. Look at John McCain pushing, you know, that pushing the land defense, you know, the, the land exchange into the, the must pass national defense bill. We have to be very honest about how much the government really cares about indigenous people. And we have to be honest with ourselves and that we have a lot more leverage and a lot more power in our communities and right now it's that, it is that time to start building stronger communities. Not just through prayer, but by courage, by our physical bodies, and by challenging those systems like the two-party system. Like the two I also want to acknowledge, because I should have done this right away, but I want to acknowledge that this territory, or this community, um, is primarily Hogum, uh, Altum territory. So I want to acknowledge uh, the Pipash, who also hold very, uh, a lot of regards to Malga Kwak, I can't believe they call it Pipash, I'm sorry, I don't think Pipash, I don't believe it. Um, I want to acknowledge them as well because they have also had held a strong resistance. This definitely is not acknowledged enough as it should be in our community. But I also want to acknowledge that these waters, there is a lot of commerce and, and trade in these areas. And this valley definitely is very giving, is very loving, and takes care of a lot of us. And we need to regard it and respect it in those ways. And as a friend of mine, who I wish was scared, has said again and again, we have to recognize the power of the water. We have to recognize that the waters connect us. That all these rivers, streams, they all definitely lead into one place. And that's how we need to regard one another as tribal people, as indigenous people, and, and people that are not indigenous to these lands. We, we hold a lot of responsibility, and we need to start acting. So when you're going to ask me 
later on, well, how can I get involved? And I'm going to give you some hashtags. And I'm going to give you some links. And I'm going to do that whole thing. Um, there's definitely a lot of people out there that have worked a lot harder and are more knowledgeable about the specifics about the 202. But what I'm going to tell you is like um, Nalene had mentioned, show up. Show up. Show up to those rallies. Show up to those communities and ask the people themselves how they need to be supported. It is hard as indigenous people to continuously be involved in these things when our communities are under tremendous trauma. Drugs and alcohol, you know, um, poverty. In any way that you can put resources into those communities, not through any necessarily organizations, but to fund the people, the actual fighters, the people that are actually doing the work, is where they need to go. So with that, I wanted to end in saying that Mala Club, we all enjoy. A lot of us hike there, a lot of us acknowledge that there is something beautiful about that place, about South Mountain. And as we go farther and farther, I want to acknowledge that there's a lot of pain happening right now with the Alton people. There's a lot of division. And I'm speaking to the indigenous people in this room. We cannot continuously oppress one another. We cannot continuously fight one another. We cannot continuously be territorial over issues. We are perpetuating what they want us to be and what they want us to do. And we can no longer stand like that. And some people, and some people know what I'm talking about, and some may not, but that is the message that I came here today to the indigenous people in this room. So with that, I just wanted to say I'm going to stop up. Sorry, I don't have any sense. <laughs> <laughs>